Today's word is stupendous. You need some encouragement. We really, really love listening to you guys. You need some inspiration. We love your podcast. Wonderfully inspiring as I think about my marriage. Are you saying I don't apologize? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. The light just went off. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> stupendous marriage encouragement. You're listening to the Stupendous Marriage Show. Hey there, welcome to the Stupendous Marriage Show. I am Stu Gray. Hey, I'm Lisa Gray. This is a show where we answer questions from you. You know, a lot of times we feel like we're alone in our problems. and I thought you were going to say alone in the studio. I'm like, we are, unless somebody else is here. Sometimes we feel like we're <laughs> alone in our issues and problems in our marriage. And it's like, man, we're the only couple that goes through this. And this is horrible. This is terrible. And you can't think of what to do. And you don't have anybody to talk to. That is one of the reasons why we are here to let you know that there are hundreds and thousands of couples who might be struggling with similar things to what you struggle with. And if you ask a question, you can get some insight from us and you can kind of feel like you're not alone because there are hundreds of people who listen to this show who could be in the same boat as you. So you send your email to us on air at stupendousmarriage.com. You can text a question our way. 1-615-592-1060 one 1060 or hook up with the big blue button at stupendousmarriage.com. You know, I had somebody ask me recently about our emails and that process. And just basically they said, gosh, I don't know if I would have the courage to email something in because I'm afraid my name might be mentioned or something like that. Just know no one sees the emails except Stu and I. And we would never, ever, ever share your name or any personal information on the show that might identify you because our heart is not to point out to everybody what's going on in your world, but really to hopefully offer some encouragement in what you're going through. And then also to have other listeners here so they might be encouraged to know they are not alone if you're going through the same thing that they are. There are a couple things happen when you share your story. The first thing is You get out of your head, you get out of your mind, and it's like, man, this whole weight lifts off of your shoulders. Yeah, absolutely. So that's the first thing that happens. The second thing happens, we read it, and you provide a place for us to have a conversation. So that is beneficial to you because you hear what we're talking about your situation, but then your situation is a springboard for hundreds of other people to also have conversations about their own marriage. While they might not be going through the same thing you're going through, they can then pick apart our conversation and the things in your email and have their own conversations to work through what they might be going through. I know that's what we do. Yeah, sure. (laughs) You know, we have the conversation on the microphone of what is happening in the email and what we think, but there's a lot of conversation that we have away from the microphone that benefits us and our marriages, things that we haven't thought about or things, wow, that's really interesting. Remember when we went through that, you know, and so it's really good and healthy for us that we actually do the show. So we love it. And on a whole other spiritual level, God speaks to people in different ways. And when we share something here, you know, it's like what Mr. Rogers used to say before every show. He wanted common ground, a holy space between every child who watched the mm, show yeah. and the TV screen. And we pray that for our show, that God would move in your heart and speak something to you that isn't necessarily said, but you hear it and receive it based on your life and the spirit in you and the life situation that you're in. That is our hope for the show. And we do have an email coming up. So we're glad you're here. Here's our email for today. Hey guys, the past few months I've been feeling miserable. I don't feel like we have the stereotype nagging wife issue. My husband is the fault finder and he's gotten to a point where he has nothing nice to say, period. He complains about something I do every day. He mainly complains about minor things, but when the complaints outweigh anything good, it starts to boil over. Yesterday I tried to tell him, how he's been making me feel, but he turned it around as if it was all my fault and that he has a good reason for the things he says. I left our argument feeling sad and upset. He didn't even give me a chance to finish what I had to say. This morning, he's been acting as if no fight has ever occurred. Today, he has been speaking to me with respect, but I feel that he never apologizes. Clearly, he feels he's been in the wrong, so why does he not sit me down and say he's sorry? It's always left hanging until the next argument. Could you give me any thoughts? 
So there's two different things going on. Obviously, the husband is just in a negative headspace. And I think we all get in those at times where all we're thinking about is the little things that bug us. And it probably has nothing to do with her. It probably has something to do with work or something else going on in his world that all of a sudden everything's wrong, you know, and we, I think we talked about that last time using the word like everything and every time and always and never, you know, chances are he's just in that headspace where everything's wrong. And so the negative things that she's doing in his mind are being highlighted. And I think it's wonderful that she pointed that out to him of how she's feeling. Just understand that just pointing that out doesn't mean it's going to stop. Like you, he really does have to break that headspace and figure out like the 10,000 foot view, because it's not about all the little things you're doing wrong. What offense has really happened? Is there an offense happening at work? Or is it an offense that maybe he has with you that's a bigger issue that he is now allowing to get into all the little things of everyday life? I think that could be true where there's something else going on and it's bleeding out onto his wife. I mean, Mm -hmm. that could definitely be the case, but it could also be a personality type nitpicky, just little this, little that. What you focus on grows. And I heard it said this weekend at church, it was a great phrase. We had a a testimony weekend at church where people were sharing what God had done in their lives. And one of the couples had gotten up and just telling about miracle babies. And um, they decided to fast the internet during the pregnancy because they didn't want to see negative things about what could be wrong with the baby. And the husband said, you know what? You crave what you feed. Ah, yeah. I remember that line. It was so crazy. And that phrase has just been on my head and in my heart for the past several days. And it is so true. So you look for the negative thing and then you see the negative thing and you look for the negative thing. You see the negative thing. You're feeding, you're feeding, you're feeding, you're feeding. And guess what? Then you start to see it and you see it and you see it and you crave it. And so it's just negative, 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 negative. And I have done that in my life. I've been to Dr. Google and WebMD (laughs) and and I put my head in that those negative places. I, I am the first in line to say I shouldn't do that. But you crave what you feed. And so he is doing that by l- always looking and always pointing out the negative things. Dr. John Gottman says there should always be five positives for one negative. So what he's not giving you, he is not filling your love tank with. He needs to be saying five positive things to you for every one negative thing. And that is why you feel dumped on and you feel so low and so horrible because all he's doing is negative, negative, negative. Now, all that to say you can't change him. Right. You can't make him change his perspective, but you can change yours. And so really trying to focus on maybe the one or two positive things he might say, right? Because there's got to be something in your day, something in your daily interaction that he is doing something, whether he gives you a kiss or he gives you a hug or he cleans something for you or he picks something up for you or he says something semi-nice and focusing on those things and really feeding those things back to him. No matter what he says negative, continue to try to build him up. And I think that's going to kind of counteract some of the negativity and might help him shake it off. The other thing which you've already done is have a conversation. A lot of times I know for you, Stu, when you get in that negative headspace, you're not even consciously aware of it. And if I say, hey, (laughs) what's going on? Because you seem like you're in a bad mood or you're kind of grumpy. What's happening? A lot of times, all of a sudden you have an awareness that, wow, I, I really am. I didn't realize I was that way. And then you start talking to me about it and processing, even if it's towards me, in a negative way, outside of your head really usually helps deflate the situation. And so just remembering, you know, our role as a spouse is not just to be loved by our spouse, but to love our spouse in spite of whether they deserve it or not. You know what I mean? And so if she can love him through the season and speak life and love to him, then hopefully he will come out of the clouds and be able to get some clarity and realize that that is kind of what's happening with him. And what you had talked about, the expectation of an apology. <laughs> I was going to bring that up next because we've just had this conversation in the past couple of weeks in our house. Well, it's <laughs> We're we're this way where we have a tough conversation and then we walk away and we act like nothing ever happened. 
uh, I don't know if I'd say we in that um, context. I, I'm pretty good at apologizing. <laughs> Are you saying I don't apologize? <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 the light just went off. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, we just had this conversation because our son, something happened and he didn't apologize. And, and I said, you know, do you remember that conversation of us talking about that? And Are you talking to me? Are you saying that <laughs> I, do I need to remember that conversation? I'm not talking to someone else in the room. <laughs> oh, I, thought you, I thought you were talking about saying that to our son. Do you remember that conversation? Not me. Yes, I remember you telling me in that conversation that I need to be more apologetic to you so our son can actually see the apology taking place because he doesn't do it very well. And maybe he's learning that from his dad. Yeah, well, yeah. I heard that very loud and clear. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yes. But you know, it really is interesting. When I read that, I'm like... You know, we do. The, I mean, honestly, we have fights and a lot of times the next day, especially if they're silly stuff, we don't go into some big discussion about why we were annoyed or what I did or you did. But at the same time, there are times that I'm just like kind of throw up on you or you throw up on me and we need to go back and acknowledge that. And there needs to be some, hey, I'm sorry. And you've actually gotten a lot better at that. So for you know, 15 years, you definitely weren't good at about that. And I think that's something you've really grown in over the past couple of years of trying to, especially if it's a big deal, coming back and saying, hey, I'm sorry, like I didn't mean to hurt you and, and that kind of stuff. So again, not something she can change in him, but it is something that you have to pick your battles with. Is it something worth starting another fight over to get him to say sorry? Or do you wait until you guys are not arguing and have a good conversation. I think that's when you and I have had them, is when we're not in the middle of a fight. And I've said, by the way, I would love it if when we do fight, if you can come back and pursue me or, or apologize to me. Other couple thoughts that I had. Is there any truth in the nitpicky things that he is talking about? Is there anything you can do to change your behavior so he's not finding those things that may be truth or not in what he's nitpicking you on? I don't know what he's criticizing you about so that's just the thought i had and again you need more positive from him so if you can find a neutral time to say hey i would love to be apologized to when we have a big argument and we walk away and act like everything is normal and natural so really saying that to him in a time when he isn't isn't upset but you know him best and you're in the relationship with him so you have to determine when that time is I really can't tell you when the perfect time is to say that to him, because if he's always finding something negative, you do have the potential for off the cuff negative comments, even asking for an apology. So that's kind of a bummer. And I don't know how explosive that situation is. Yeah. And it goes back to the 10,000 foot view, really trying to discern and talk to him from a loving way, not a, hey, I'm mad at you because you don't apologize or I'm mad at you because you criticize me, but more of a, honey, what's going on? Like, I've just really sensed that you've been really upset and aggravated with a lot of different things lately. And what's happening in your world that's causing you to be in that headspace? And, and how can I help you and, and try to come to him in a way that you're coming to him in love? and not in judgment or criticizing him. Now, here's an opportunity for you to join in the conversation. If you have a situation that happens in your marriage and then you walk away, how do you resolve your fight? Do you apologize well? Do you not apologize well? You can always send us an email on air at stupendousmarriage.com or find us online. We are on Facebook, Stupendous Marriage Show. You can leave a comment there or Instagram, Stupendous Marriage. Twitter even, Stupendous Duo. I couldn't find Stupendous Marriage. It was too long for Twitter <laughs> handle. So Stupendous Duo on Twitter. We would love to hear how you guys resolve issues and arguments in your marriage. That's all for this week. See ya. Bye.